Okay, all right. Um, just <laughs> my goodness, my message is really non stop coming in. Okay, today is the 8th of December, Wednesday. All right, guys, look at the background pictures. So many pictures, right? So obviously, we're going to talk about Omicron. We're talking about the Wall Street traders are filled with happiness these last three days because the Dow Jones have been up, right? I've been telling you the funds are in. Buy, buy, buy. All right, but then again, be very careful. Please listen to what I share later on. So the biggest weekly inflows of funds, okay, $6.7 billion came in. Well, quite substantial, honestly. $6.7 billion came in last week alone, all right? So it was after the Dow Jones came down more than a thousand point overall last week. And then after that, to this few days, the Dow Jones has keep on buying up. The question is this, who are buying, all right? So obviously the funds are buying, but these funds are mostly the retailer funds. So you might understand the difference there. Most of them are retailer funds. So this is where I get a little bit jittery on this. So that's why I want you to listen to what I have to share later. Yeah. Okay. Morning to you, Darren. All right. So of course, Joe Biden had met with Putin, obviously. Now, remember back in March, Joe Biden was calling him a killer. But yesterday, seemingly all is good. So we'll talk about that also shortly. All right. Now, disclaimer as usual, my friends, do not, my job is to share information with you. Your job is to make money from the market. Yeah. So hopefully you have done that. Now this morning, because I was having so many messages coming in, I have no time. I really got no time to do a review of what uh, my, my previous trades said. Really no time for that itself. So that's why I won't be covering what happened yesterday. I will do a quick snapshot on it later in the afternoon on its own. Yeah. All right. So what happened is that now you can see that uh, <laughs> Scrooge is not happy right now because the bear is unhappy. So apparently right now, the bear thought that they won for a couple of days and they think that they'll win. But unfortunately, I reminded you guys that the, the fear and greed index was at 20. I suspected a rebound will happen and indeed it really, really done it, okay? So it's incredible recovery. And of course, um, for traders itself, right? This is something that I told you that it will happen. And um, well, if you have followed me and follow through, you would have been making on the long side, yeah? because. Quite a bit of people actually made money on the long side recently, okay? All right. So did investors really buy in? Of course, they bought in, okay? Undeniable, the investors actually bought in. They bought in the dips, okay? And it's the highest level since 2017. So the amount or the money that they brought in itself is really the highest ever since 2017, all right? So the deep buyers came in full force. Uh, because I told you, right, the Omicron thingy was a little bit of a joke because there was this amount of virus, but people make it so big and make it out a mountain or molehill. And of course, that created the create the created the market. But that it was on purpose, as I said before, the market came in to buy very strongly. And of course, now quite a bit of people have actually profited from it itself. So once again, this has proven that how the world works in this market, okay, full of dangerous sign. One moment they are like buyers, actually they are actually they are sellers and stuff like that. So guys, get you must get used to this momentum in the market. Yeah, it's gonna keep on happening. So the clients of Wall Street says that they bought in six point seven billion dollars, the largest weekly intake in four years. Oh my god! So this buying spree came after the worst day of the year on Friday, where the Dow just lost nine hundred points. Right? Okay, we got that. Huh? Okay. So the thing is this: on a single stock level, right? They also saw the biggest inflow in a year and the largest exchange fund inflow since mid-September. So it seems that everybody is jumping into the market right now to buy into the market. So of course, they were most of the clients, whether from hedge funds, institutionals, private funds, they were all the net buyers, okay? So this is very important information. I'll tell you that very late, uh, shortly when we do the charting part. Because this information tells me that now everybody are buyers. So the question that I want to ask is this. And the only thing I want to ask is, who are the sellers? Because every buyer, there's always a seller, right? So if there's a lot of buyer, then who are the sellers? That's my biggest question that I'm asking right now. So with that itself, right? Okay, we can see that they are very open. They tell the whole world that everybody's buying. Okay, so imagine this time everybody's buying. Okay, so obviously the market has to go higher. I repeat, the market has to go higher because if the market don't go any higher itself, right, there's going to be serious trouble for the market. So please take note of this today's MAO. Very important, yeah? 
Okay, so I say again because I was so busy this morning and didn't have time to even do my, you know, usual usual sharing of my trades. You see that? So you can see I don't put this as a, my top priority. I put it as my last priority itself, yeah? So that is my point here. So that's the reason why I don't want, uh, I can see that, right? If it is my priority to post, I will put it first, okay? But I really got no time, so I will skip this. I'll do it a short one on the site later, yeah? Now, of course, uh, in terms of economic figures, finally, we have something substantial today. On Wednesday, today, we have GOLTS jobs opening. We had the crude, crude oil inventories, okay? So whether, but the main thing will be the initial jobless claim, which is uh, tomorrow. And of course, we are looking at a higher number, uh, quite surprising in this current period, but of course, with the Omicron going on and stuff like that, maybe that leads on it. All right, so we look at it tomorrow. So tomorrow, we will do our usual guess, the economic figures. And of course, for you guys who win some ADA coins, yeah? Fred just say that it's because the Fed is the best seller. <laughs> well, uh, well, Fed, I can't say you are wrong. Now, later I will say that you are right. I'll just have to say that, right? We all probably know why. Who can sell more than what you can see, all right? So we are quite clear as well. Thank you, Fred. So of course, the Dow just went up all the way, 492 points overnight. Wow, another 1.4%. So you can see that the way it went up is really vertically up as well. So yes, correct. Can't be funds buying, only funds buying. Can't be only uh, retailers, you know, things like that. It has to be someone else. Because you look at it, after that as well, right? From 11, a, from 11 a.m. their time until about 3 a.m. their time, right? The market's dead. Oh my goodness. So you realize that the Wall Street only worked like for first half an hour. First one and a half hour they work, and then usually after by 11 a.m. until 3 a.m. they're totally dead. Okay, we have seen this happening so long, so often until I think I lost track already. So what do you think, guys? How can a market be buying so substantially and then after it goes sideways for more than five hours? So don't you realize that this is whole thing is highly manipulated? Correct or not? Debt ceiling? Oh, you have been pushed back again, <laughs> Anthony. The debt ceiling has been pushed back again. Yes, they have pushed back the debt ceiling again. Yes, undeniable. So this is why how incredible the US system is. They are really very broken. They just don't care, don't bother. As long as everybody plus is still safe and sound towards Christmas, everybody is fine. But I got my warning sign to share with you later today. Yeah, so be just be very careful for what I have to share because I don't want you to be caught on the wrong side of the track. Yeah. Now, of course, at the same time, now we can see that, oops, sorry, I didn't do my PowerPoint. You see, today I'm so, so busy. One of my worst uh, prepared PowerPoint today because I'm so busy this morning, really nonstop calling, yeah. Okay, so tech stocks leads the market, market higher for the second day in a row, okay? So what happened? Uh, NASDAQ notches its best day since March, okay? Let's take a look. So what happened is that the investors came in to buy into the less fearful potential economic impact from the new Omicron coronavirus variant. So I told you before, guys, that uh, this Omicron is really nothing. It was really a smoke screen. They did it. They, they do the selling for some reason. But of course, one of the selling get a bit too heavy. It's all right. They come in to buy. So what happened is that the tech stock all recovers. All right. Nasdaq recovers quite substantially. And it's up by uh, 3% in, in one single day. That's quite a lot. And of course, chip makers make money. And you can see that this is the bigger front. You can see that Dow was down by 900 points. And then it, were, it, then it recovered 237, then down 600, down 400, so lost 1,000 points. But immediately, the market responded back with recovery of almost 1,600 points. Wow, okay? So you can see that, right? The market didn't go down. In fact, the market went up in a way. So that's the reason why traders, you have to be very careful that this market itself, right? Although uh, we are having tapering around, so logically speaking itself, right? The stock market came down, but now the buyers coming in. But these buyers are now the investors' buyer. So which means that, right, if the market is very confident, you'll go higher, good for them. But because you must understand the market has been going up because of Federal Reserve stimulus package. So if the Federal Reserve is actually going to reduce this, there'll be no more new go higher good luck to them because if the market doesn't go higher the same amount of selling will come down as equally strong so that's why i say this guys the next two three days is going to be very critical very important be very careful on this okay we are on the long side in the market last two days but i'm just going to want you for just to be very very careful okay now look at the dow jones recap for today let's take a look now dow jones recap the opening price was here it was a c c r y on the dow that's the reason why we were very clear. We were very uh, optimistic. We call for buy. But because the KSI was straight, right, we don't dare to go for full. Hence, when the entry to the stop loss was so far away, our bullet value was not able to cover. So we did not enter the CCRY. But on the intraday, we went in to buy. And I told you guys, the market will go to the first level. And that's 35425 And we have done, we have, we have shown you that. 
And of course, people have made money. And we also say that if it goes higher, it will go to 35,500. So we actually talked about this um, yesterday. And of course, we were doing live session yesterday. We call for buy. And of course, a lot of us take profit at 35,500. Un 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 unwillingly, it's all right in a way to say this, but the Dow went up another 300 points because they covered the entire chocolate bar. You see that? They covered the entire chocolate bar. Wow. So mm, what a waste. Yeah, I've forgotten about the chocolate bar. If I knew it itself, right, I would have actually hold on. But again, it's all hindsight. Lah. So I don't, I don't want to say anything, but we did take profit. We were happy. Just that we left a lot more on the table. What a waste. Yeah, but I know some of you hold that position. Congratulations to you. All right. Now, this is the Dow Jones for the day itself. Look at it, how incredible the movement is. So first of all, we went in to buy, okay, when the market stays above OP and touches OP and, case, and the KSI jump was here, KSI all the way or buyer. Now, traditional indicator will ask you to sell because the market is an overbought, right, to some indicator. But to us as well, remember, 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 once the market is above OP and above pivot one, no matter what you tell me, you just have to buy. C, C, R, Y, you just have to buy. So a lot of traditional indicators will call for sell, but not our indicator. We just follow through the buy. We don't care. We don't bother. All right. So what happened? The market went all the way up to 425. Jab there around for some time. You can see that it consolidated quite a while. But once it finds strength, it pushes up again to the 500 mark. And of course, that's where we book our profit. But incredibly, it continued to go higher and then went sideways. And you can see that as long as you follow the key mark, above OP, CCRY, you buy. This is where it happened. And of course, the down shot up again and close near the high of the day itself. So in fact, the last minute, right, it was down quite fast, uh, about 200 points. Then after that, it recovered also dramatically fast. It seemed that the market dumped, but uh, some other forces came to buy. So I don't know what happened in between, but definitely for sure itself, right, we know that there's two camps in the market, one trying to let, let go, the other camp is trying to maintain. So all I can say is this, guys, be very careful, but remember the rules of the game. As long as you follow rules, right, you can make money. So above OP, above pivot one, CCRY, you buy, usually you will make. That's why my point is, okay? Not 100%, but good chance, okay? So that was what happened to the market yesterday. Now, how about gold? Now, gold is pretty cool, right? You can see on gold, you see a minute, yeah? Okay, gold, wow. Gold basically had the same experience. The KSI was red and there was blue bar, so the market was more towards sell side. Now the market did come down first initially. It did came down. Then after that, it rebounded. And once it crossed the MLP at 1781, eventually it closed at 1783. But what's more important is that it closed at the CCRY. So today we're looking to buy. And that's why my phone has been non-stop this morning. Now, of course, students, they know what to do, but sometimes they just want to get some verification, validation, confirmation, you have a lot of stuff, that's why. Okay, so gold basically started trading here. And then after it went to MLP, and it went, it went through it, it went higher. But when you see the star here as well, that means that this is a BMB and it happened to be the high of the day. And truth be told, after that, the price came down. Very nice. But once it started to hang around the OP again, we saw the KSI jump and straight away the gold shot up again. Then after that, it sold down pretty fast during the cash market open. And we thought that that was the end. But the market found the KCX there and then reversal, crossed the OP. And that was where the buy came in again. And it's, you notice this, there were no blue bars at the bottom, mean the bullishness is there. And of course, the BNB is here, and the BNB that cross MLP straight away is a buy, and that's why now we are still long in gold at the moment right now. Yeah. So once again, guys, all these are able to be, you know, of course, on on hindsight, it's easy to say, but in reality, if you follow the rules, that's what you should have done. Okay. Pretty simple. So local news and global news right now, yeah? Local and global news right now. So Omicron COVID variant has spread to 50 countries already. I cannot understand this really. I totally cannot understand this, okay? It seems that, right, this virus is spreading so fast despite borders and borders are closing. I really don't understand. I'm sure that from the very first day when the Africa, I mean, the nation that got the, the virus is Africa, I'm sure a lot of borders would have actually take notice of this and close towards some people. But unfortunately, or interestingly, it's not right. it seems that it allows it to happen, and then more and more countries will get it. It's kind of like, you know, I cannot really believe that this is, a, this is spreading in a very alarming rate. Because if it's going to spread at an alarming rate, not, the stock market will not be behaving like what we are seeing today. So somehow, somewhere, the whole equation just doesn't make any sense, yeah? In my opinion, yeah? It doesn't make any sense. 
Okay, now I'm just letting you know is how my, my laptop is going low battery very soon, so I'm going to bring it faster a little bit. Yeah, I left my charger in the location. So with that, it's all right. It's an almost vertical infection. That shows a high degree of transmissibility. I, I really don't buy that itself. So to me, is that <clears throat> our end of the day is all these things tells me that this virus itself is here to stay, and maybe this is the last week before, have, before the holding ends. Now, Putin and Biden basically square for two hours after the Ukraine tension. And end of the day, do you remember that Putin... What, I mean, say Biden says he's a killer, but after a while later, Putin is satisfied from the explanation of the word called killer. So anyway, they are putting it now, but stand by for this. This actually can go very wrong, but of course, this is just only a potential problem, okay? Now, the important important market information today, quite a bit. Huh? Now, stocks should be fine when federal start raising interest rate. Okay, well, interesting. Now, let me show it to you. Huh? Apparently, itself, right, historical analysis shows that right, actually, whenever there's interest rate hike, Yes, intermittently, there will be some profit taking, but overall, it's still okay. So you can see that the last few times, whenever there is an interest rate environment, the market did perform. But of course, to be, to be honest, it's all right, in two, two, 1999 to 2000, didn't do that well. And then in 2001, the SARS came in, that bring the market lower. So now the thing is this, of course, in 2015, we also saw a tightening, and obviously, the stock market did came down by more than 15%. So it's not saying that it's a foolproof plan, a foolproof idea. So Interest rate environment is not bad. There will be initial pullback, but eventually it's out in the market is bullish, which we've seen last 30 years, then of course it's still good. Yeah. So anyway, traders are now looking at a quarter point interest rate high by May based on the CME Fed watch. And this is quite, that's quite important because it's quite reliable. So now the thing is this, with the market now all recover. So when it was down, no one said anything, everybody call back, say bad, and say they'll crash. But now market recover, they say, okay, it's ready to go for new high level. So apparently today, there's so many people calling for buy. Practically everyone around me is calling for buy. So they're saying that because of that itself, right, even though that we have taxes coming in, which are interest rate coming in, we have the low, the tapering coming in, it's still not important. In fact, itself, many charities are saying that, right, this will actually be good because by speeding up that, that means that it will actually bring up the, you know, it will stimulate the financial sectors. And of course, in this uh, banking sector will do very well. So this is what they are saying. And they feel that, right, this is just a good one because they expect a Santa Claus rally. Now, of course, we do expect the Santa Claus rally to come, but usually when everybody expects something right, I just be very careful. So JP Morgan, right, uh, Kolonovic, he is one of the very bullish guy. He's saying that trust the invest, trust this rally. So this guy says that there is a short squeeze and definitely it's all right. There'll be some opportunity funds coming in to buy. And of course, he's very, very confident. He's felt, he felt that, right, the market itself will go higher. You can see the market was coming down very nicely the last few days. And after that, a dramatic recovery. So all the losses have been cleared up by three to three days gains. So all these shows that the market is still bullish and still of funds. Now, Santoli today did a very good sharing. In fact, he said that the salvage buyers are stepping up the technology shares and what is the reason. Now, first of all, he said that, right, one of the bull's best market is a scare that proved unfounded and overstated. That means that if there's fear, but this fear is overdone, the market thinks it's over, it will come back in and buy, and usually the buying will come very strongly. He also said that, right, since the complacency is out now, there should be the market came on 5%, the market should be a good time to buy. And he also put in a chart and says that, right, the market did cool off recently. And now after the oversold period is buying and he's looking at potentially new, new historical high. And of course, with all these things ongoing right now, right, it seems that everybody's trail that S&P is going to go back again and buyers are all on standby. And of course, the, the yields are coming, is coming down. All right. But from now, it's, it's actually basing at 1.4%. So the thing is this, if the yields go up, we saw inflation picture come back again. So what is this going to happen again? So kind of mix back, right? But the important thing is that the higher debt we sell, right? You can take a look at higher debt. The higher debt we sell is actually showing a very interesting sign. So you look at the higher debt uh, in terms of retrospect, right? You see that when it's going down, the stock market goes up. When the market goes, the yield goes up, the thing goes down a little bit. So logically speaking now, if it went down so much, right, the stock market will actually move up higher. And so it's what's actually happening right now. So with all these things itself, right, it seems that the market is still full of bias and of course, even the VIX itself has pulled back. All right, the VIX has pulled back quite a fair bit itself, right? The VIX, let me just show you the VIX right now. Quick one. Sorry, I'm rushing it a little bit because today we have, I'm running out of battery. My battery, I don't do halfway, get you guys off. <laughs> okay, you can see the VIX has pulled back from the high of 35, 36. It pulled back all the way to 21. And I think it's a good time to look out for it again. So for me itself, right, VIX at the moment at 21 right now will be a good level to watch out for, okay? VIX at 21 
is a potential good level to watch out for. Yep. Okay. Okay, messages all coming in again as usual. Okay. All right. Oops, sorry. Okay, so the big tactical risk of entering the week was the contorted uh, VIX futures. And obviously, it's all right. This is whereby traders may want to take a little bit of uh, risk to buy some VIX at this price now to just protect their current position, yeah? And of course, more important thing is that there are some ongoing rumors about the swinging bubble on NASDAQ, but seemingly now with the market recovery, it shows not. But in terms of percentage of stocks in NASDAQ composite, down 50% and 20% from day high, it's all right. You can see that now there are percent of stock that's down 20 percent okay quite a fair bit down by 50 percent even more so you, you can you can see that right this is where it's increasing guys so those the stocks that are now down more than 50 percent is really up to 30 percent and this is where by the stock down 20 percent it's really 60 percent so that means that a lot of stocks are actually not doing very well now the last time when you see a high number like this remember the last time we see a high number like this is here whereby it was just pyra before the Lehman crisis it was before the Lehman crisis. So that's the reason why when the thing happened like this, right, you must be very careful. The last time we saw was 2015, uh, 2015 and that was in 2016, market, market corrected a bit. And of course, one more reaction was that in 2018, and that was before the tapering came in, the market take profit. So now we are seeing the same thing here. Do we think that the market may perform the same way? Well, technically, it could actually really happen. So that's why the NASDAQ is still, right? still going to be a bit of jittery for most traders, yeah? So of course, billionaire Ray Dalio have been calling for sell for the longest of time. And obviously, I mean, seriously, uh, he have been calling for the same thing over and over again, and it didn't really manifest. Uh. So in fact, it's, uh, there's this little joke here. So if Ray Dalio call for sell, just keep on buying. Okay. So unfortunately for the largest hedge fund, okay, this uh, hedge fund of Bridgewater is all right. He's not able to be getting it correct. And in fact, he keep on saying that there's this big problem, that big problem, but apparently it never happened. The dollar is still strong. The current level now is if the uh, India so-called between countries is all right, are still okay. So he has been wrong too. Of course, he has been right too, like in 87 and stuff. But a lot, as I said once again, for the longest of time, you can do this. Yep. Okay. All right. So with that, it's all right. Later on in the afternoon, I will talk about this uh, very William stuff. Okay. So that'll be about 3 p.m. Okay, all right, with that, it's all right. Let's go to the charts. The bull goes smooth, the, the bull goes smooth, the bears go grew, and the lemming goes is different this time. Okay, look at the charts, guys. Like I say once again, guys, if any time I do uh, have any termination of the, the thing, let me, I just have to say sorry. Yeah, let me check my battery life now. Left only 22 minutes. Yeah, I should be able to finish it, everything. Now, the China market continue to go higher, and it, this time around, yeah, broke above. Okay, the China market has broke above the MA. Uh, 200 level. This is a very strong breakout. Okay, so seriously, I thought that the Hang Seng market will go higher, but Hang Seng didn't. So that is a very important thing you must take note. Yeah. So what we see is that at the moment now the market is above the MA 230 and MA 200. So it's actually pretty bullish. Honestly, it's very bullish in fact. So what I can't understand why the Hang Seng is not moving together. And that's the reason why I get a bit jittery over here. Now this is the China overall bigger counter, but there's something that I want you now, everybody. Please take a look here. Now you can see that this is RSI, this is RSI, this is RSI. Now the last time we saw this was this is high, last time was this is high, and this time around this is high. So you can see that the third high itself is lower than the last high. So which means that the current low high now is lower. It's a lower one. So which means that if the market cannot stay above two, MA200, it will be a big sell off, okay? I repeat, if the market cannot stay above MA200 in the next few days, it will be a big sell off. So we must be very careful on this guys. Be very, very careful, yeah? Okay. All right, so that's the China market. Let's look at the today's market right now. Now, this is um, Hong, Hong, Hong Kong Hang Seng. Now, this morning, Hang Seng was okay. It was okay. Then after that, it pulls back down on profit taking. But now, it's can see that, right? Now, the China market is still trading higher. It is still trading lower. So now Hong Kong is all right. If it stays below the um, pivot two, 23,957, I suspect that you go down lower. Now, yesterday I did a live trading on Hang Seng and we all make profit after that as well. Congratulations to those who actually follow through and make money, yeah? Now, MLP today is very important, 23,897. If the market can stay, it will be good. 
But if the market really breaks down, then of course the number to watch out for is 23,704 level. This could be the technical point that I suspect the Hang Seng will go because the KSI is red in color and it's an uptick rate. So I don't really like to be on the long side today for Hang Seng. Yeah? So be very careful on that. So that's Hang Seng for us. Let's look at the regional market, like say the US CFDs. Now, of course, the Dow Jones has break above my chocolate bar already. This is the chocolate bar here itself. The market has broke above it. So done deal. So you should take TP, right? So I suggest you guys to take profit already. Huh? Don't hold any more position. Do consider take profit. Now, for the Dow Jones itself, right? For today, you can see that the upside is pretty strong, but and it crossed the BMB. Can you see that the BMB SL one time one extension recovery? So now there's a KCB over here. Watch out for it. It's 35,897. So the high now is 35,863. I believe that this 897 might be triggered during the Asia, uh, during the, uh, the European time. Huh? It may be touching it. Okay, so watch out for that. Now, once the market touches the KCB and pullback, I will suggest you to take TP, okay? Don't really buy. But of course, the KSI is green. So that is reason, uh, that's a country side. There's the buying is still there but because of the KCB there. Of course, the market can even try to go towards the pivot one, which is 36,000. That will bring the market to the next level again. But like I say, once again, this is the, excuse me, this is the high. This is a recent high. This is the third high. This is the fourth high. So you look at it, it's all right. A, B, C, D. Now, of course, D must cross C first. So only when D cross C, then you pull back, then we look for buy again so that we can look go all the way to potential A, B or even historical high. All right, so that is my view on trading. So traders just think of this particular fact. Now, if the market fail to cross C and then stop there and reverse, then of course the market may come back down to 35,469 level, which is the MA30 level. Okay, all clear on this? All right, big boys using trap, using news to trap big retailers. Yeah, always have been always like that. Never change, never will. Okay, NASDAQ. Now, NASDAQ is also very bullish right now at this moment. Now, the NASDAQ has crossed above the MA moving average, and now it's a KCV resisted here itself at 16,428 level. So, same thing, the KSI is a KSI jump yesterday and it's uptick. So, usually we should see further upside. Yeah? So, the market may go to 16,513. But, same thing, if the market failed to cross the, this KCV, then there may be some profit taking. But, of course, again, if the market can cross through this A, this is B and this is C. If C can cross B, then of course the market will likely be going even higher, right? So for me as a trader, we will want to go slow right now. We want to see and observe the market and see whether can this upside recover because I say this upside is done by a lot on the retail side itself, yeah? Okay, so we have the S&P 500. The S&P 500 also have the same thingy, same movement. KSI was already green for two days. That's why we have been buying S&P. And of course, there was a stack here itself at this 4650. All right, now the KCB is here at 4713. So I believe the market will test at one tree later. Yeah, I believe you'll test. But once it tested and pulled back, the market may sell. But do note, the one time extension is actually at 4726 level. So not too far away. The market may purposely go there itself just to touch and go. But at the moment now, I will say this, 4713 will be a level that I'm watching for the S&P to tap and come down, yeah? So take note of that, okay? So that is what we have for the three US indices, Nikkei. Now Nikkei has recovered very strongly, very strongly. Yesterday we say if Nikkei cannot go down, it will go all the way up. And true be told, now it has happened and it touches the MA. 200. So when you are buying here yesterday, we already say that if it goes up, you go to MA200, it really, really happened. So now it really happened means what? That means that now it will have to stall here first to see whether we progress higher. I don't think you'll progress higher. I believe that there'll be some profit taking. So traders be very careful. 28,824 right now is a good time to take some partial profit. Yeah, take partial profit. Okay, partial profit. Yeah, consider to do that right now. Okay, don't hold further first. You don't want to be caught with the wrong side. Okay, so that is the um, that is the Nikkei. Hold on a minute, yeah. Okay. All right. So there's a Nikkei. How about Dax? 
Now, DEX, I told you, DEX will go up, right? You see that? DEX shot up yesterday. Look at it. Oh, my goodness. It gap up. It shoot up all the way. Remember, I said that DEX will hit MA200 at 15,608. Remember? If you remember that, put the word DEX spot on, yeah? I was definitely saying that this uh, DEX will hit this 15,608. Of course, I didn't expect to go to 15,705. I say 608. So the DEX really opened and then shoot up itself. Though, And of course, in one single day, it did the one time one extension by its own, okay? So it means that when it opened itself, right, it goes up and went all the way up to hit the DEX, uh, this one time one level. That is really, really incredible. Really, yeah? Thank you, Brian. Thank you, wait up. Thank you, Anthony, I think. Yeah, thank you very much. So again, you can see that all my MAO is all right. You can backtrack and see whether what I say is there. Yeah, I was saying that it will go up to the for 15608. Yeah. So today is all right. Of course, today with the Dow Jones so strong, it may actually test this point, which is 15,970. Now, do not go the Omicron virus when it happened in all right. Germany got hit the most because of time the virus was increasing in uh, variant was increasing. So of course, uh, we can't, can't deny this when now if everybody say, okay, Omicron is nothing, of course, all this will recover. So this is a big, big gap here as well. So I suspect that it will also cover the gap in the near term. Yeah, okay. So that's what happened in the technical world. Okay, so that is next. Let's just see, I left for 13 minutes, I'm almost done. Okay, crude oil. Now crude oil basically still can you go higher now? It's trading at $71. I, re I remember I tell you, right, crude oil is a buy, and I stick with the debt itself. Crude oil now is a $71, but I believe there will be some resistance soon on crude oil. I believe that resistance will come very soon at $72.90. Now, yesterday, the high itself was, yesterday, the high was $72.80, missed by $0.10 cent only. So I suspect that today, if the market do really try, it may purposely go up to test and then come back down, yeah? So $72.90 will be the level that I'm watching for the crude oil. And of course, people will be there to buy. Okay, wait up. Uh, 9, 10, December short still stay on. 9, 10? 9, 10 means what? Uh, the next two days, is it? Yeah, of course, to short itself, that means that the market must come down first. 9, 10 is a day to, get, to prepare to short, correct? So we just prepare, okay? But you cannot just short like that. Uh. You must wait for the rules to call for sell. Then you short, okay? Uh, okay, you got it? Cannot just blindly short down. Huh? If the market want to go higher, we, we don't we don't fight with it. Yeah, very important. So okay, you got it. If you got it, please uh give me the confirmation huh? because I don't want you to misunderstand that. Okay, we are looking to short from today or tomorrow onwards. Yeah, but watching the market very closely. Okay, all right. So that is the let's look at the gold price. Okay, gold price now today we have been buying this morning. The buying price is one seven eighty four. It's a CCRY on the day chart. So we went in to buy. CCRY on the day chart is a buy. So the first target itself is 1789 because that's a pivot. Now pivot is a strong pivot. So once you hit the pivot, you pull back because the KSI is red in color, right? So that will be pulled back at 1789. But once you cross 1789, it should be able to go up to 1797. Okay, 1797. So if you look at the 15 minute chart, you can see a very clear why the goal came down because the goal went up first. And after that, you can see the KTR plus one and the pivot are there. So you can see the market just all stop there itself. And of course, you can see it's a BMB at a day high. So that's why a star will be on top. Can you see that? A star will be on top. You see, very beautiful. So of course, when you see a star on top of you, it means the BMB. So definitely there'll be some profit taking, and especially if triggered the pivot one, there should be some profit taking, yeah? Okay, you can see that my thing is flashing already. Getting, I'm getting a bit, uh, no battery. Yeah, silver. Okay, silver itself for the day chart, you can see that silver itself, right? At the moment now, it's sideways, still no movement yet. Indeed, yeah, silver sideways. So we just wait for a while. Silver, I got no call on this right now. Uh, just saw this, uh, I just saw, right? Yes, gold itself still is an omega. My signal is still there, though so the open and the lows are the same. So it's omega signal. So which means that today, if you want to stick on to the buy side, once it cross pivot one, you can continue to buy, yeah? Once it cross pivot one, above OP, above CC, above OP, above pivot one, CCRY can buy. Okay, Bitcoin, last two. Okay, now for Bitcoin itself, right, it has, it's going to come down. My opinion is Bitcoin is going to come down. I believe that Bitcoin will have to will test back 49,000 first. 
And once it tests for 9,000, it may go back down again. Now, it's a BNB here on Bitcoin. It's a BNB. So 45,000 most likely will be triggered. Now, this is actually we've got the weekend data. So that's why you don't see the 43,000. But in terms of our data, I suspect that it will go down to 45,000. And FYI, FYI, there's a chance that we're going to have weekend trading for Bitcoin and Ethereum this coming weekend. Yeah, uh, I will tell you confirmed by today. I'm asking AIMS right now. They say that they will have cryptocurrency trading over the weekend very soon, right? This weekend, I'll confirm with y'all later. Okay, so pretty cool. So again, a trade on over the weekend already. And of course, uh, Ethereum. Now, Ethereum is still a good buy in my opinion, but not now. I still think that it will come back down again. I would love to come it come back down to somewhere here at 39, 78. But just two days ago, it came down beautifully. I miss it and then it went up again. So I believe that this price is very good buy because every time we come down to this price, the market will always rebound. So 39, 78 will be a level to watch. Okay, of course, you can go down lower to 3,800 level will be even better. By the moment now, I don't think it will go up. I think there'll be some more profit taking on this cryptocurrency. So traders, you need to be careful on that. Yeah. Okay, guys, I think I've covered everything itself for today. I'm so sorry to rush it through. Yeah, because my battery is less only 5%, it will shut down anytime. So remember this today, the best trade of the day now, I think it's still gold. Because gold is an omega signal. On, it's a gold chart, it's an omega signal. And meaning above OP, CCRY can buy. And of course, if the market cross people want 1789, it'll be also a buy. All right. So watch out for gold today. Now, for the US market itself, right at the moment, it's still trading pretty strongly. So I don't think that you should be shorting it right now. Let it wait for a while. The signal will tell you, then you go for it. You don't go into it on its own. Now, Hong Kong itself is not comfortable with the way it's recovering. So I believe that Hong Kong might be coming down to test down again later this afternoon, especially if the US market do take profit. Okay, thank you all guys for today. Thank you very much. I'll see you later on for the Larry William uh, segment inside 3 p.m. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye.